Hello there, this is a tutorial that is overdue. Uh, I've had a lot of my subscribers asking me, Maria, is this Milia? Maria, is this fungal acne? Uh, what is this? So today I'm going to explain exactly the difference between Milia and Syringoma. Uh, they look very similar, but they're totally different. So stay tuned until the end. I will do a lot of explanations, some theory, what to do, both medically and naturally, and you decide which procedure is best for you. So let's get started right now. Very quickly, this is Maria from Vancouver, Canada, and uh, as usual, my first focus are my subscribers, and so I want to thank you. I have reached 10 thousand subscribers. I've never thought that that would happen, but I'm, I'm uh, over the moon and uh, so, so grateful. For the people that do not know me, well, my name is Maria. I've uh, been in this industry for a long, 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 long time, and uh, I've decided to do YouTube so I can reach more people and help more individuals. So if you enjoy what you see and uh, what I say in my content, please take a moment and click below to subscribe and ask me questions. So comments, feedback. If you don't agree with what I say, it's okay. Just tell me. And so we can discuss it. Now, where can you really discuss with me is on Instagram and the link is right below. Instagram is more private, so you can send me your picture of your condition so I can see, and from there we can discuss what we can do. So uh, let's start talking about syringoma mainly, a little bit about fungal acne, and a little bit about milia, but the focus is syringoma. So if you have fungal acne, I know that a lot of people will say put antifungal shampoo, nizarol, and apply it, but that is only temporary and is very, very dehydrating and for a lot of people does not work. That is uh, something that you need to deal with an internal issue, fungal, something to do from the gut and uh, people call it candida, it doesn't really matter but you have to look at what's happening internally. So I do have a tutorial coming up, and the little card is coming, and please look at it. And if you do think that you have candida uh, or fungal acne, it is itchy sometimes, uh, very irritating, and it can spread everywhere. It can start here, it can start here, it can start anywhere. It starts from the gut. So let's look at the gut. So do give me a little, um, link, you know, click below or go directly to uh, um, Instagram <laughs> for a second, ah! to Instagram and send me a picture. Tell me where you're from. Why do I ask you where you're from? Because from there I can tell uh, what type of foods you eat, uh, what is your diet mainly. And uh, so let's do that. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the fungal acne because there's so much for it. Just look at the tutorial and right away go to Instagram. Milia, on the other hand, usually happens around the eyes, sometimes a little bit lower. I had one over here and I do have a tutorial that you can look at how to remove it. I have another one for prevention. And so everything is prevention. And as you can see what you can do to eliminate it. And, uh, and I have pictures, of course I have pictures. And the other one, the syringoma, is something to do with the uh, pseudoreferous or sweat glands. Uh, so let's look at uh, the, between the two of them, because uh, uh, melia and also uh, syringoma, a lot of people get confused, the difference between them. And so I have a little diagram and pictures. So which one should I start first? Okay, so. Syringoma is like this, and you see, like, they have like a, like a, their bumps, and usually happens around the eyes. Usually, but it can also go onto the neck. You see that? Yeah, very nice and clear there. 
and uh, the chest, wherever you have sweat glands. Some people get it in the area of the groin area. And uh, so I will talk a little bit more what to do. But the milia is quite different. You see that? Let me take bring up the, the, the other picture. Okay. The difference between this and this. So let's look at the theory behind it. I know that I so much with theory because I believe that when you see a picture in diagrams, it makes sense. So, okay, so the first one here is the milia. And uh, it usually like looks like a little pearl and you need to get a little lancet, um, a, like a needle, a sharp needle, and you cut right across, like the skin there, right across there. And then with your two fingers, you just pop it out, just like pop it out. If you're scared of doing that, because it's around the eyes, just go to a, an esthetician that knows how to do it, or a dermatologist. And it usually comes around the uh, hair follicle. It is associated with the hair follicle, because this is um, like sebum, oil. This is a normal, you can see here, like a normal sweat gland, and the particular one is the eccrine sweat gland, okay? And uh, everything is found right into the, into the dermis, so it's an epidermis, and then this is the dermis area. Now, this is a normal sweat gland, so sweat is produced here, and then it's it goes right to, to, the, to the surface of the skin. And the purpose of the sweat glands is to cool us down. So if we're doing exercise or we're in the, in, in, in the heat, it cools the body down. Now here is a syringoma, an inflamed syringoma. So basically what's happening is that it is like a harmless skin bump. And you've seen the picture before. And it's found uh, really... Uh, usually these ones here are usually found around the eyes and that's where people get bothered because if it's on the chest it doesn't bother you as much but when it comes around the eyes it's, it brings your self-esteem down because it does look like a textured and bumpy area so what happens is because there is a proliferate per, <laughs> that word is always so hard for me proliferating it's like it becomes like it starts to inflame and it happens in this area and then it pushes it up so the problem is not like this milia that you can squeeze it and take it out. It is happening at the bottom and then this inflammation pushes everything up and that's why you see these bumps. So our main focus is what can we do? Yes, you can do certain things and this makes sense now. Milia is in here. You just cut it out and it's done. But with syringoma, it is dealing with an inflammation all the way down to the dermis at the bottom. So now I'm going to talk about different procedures that you can decide what to do. So the first thing I ask you, do not self-diagnose yourself because if you have this, the syringoma, and you start picking at it with a needle uh, or a lancet, it, you're not going to do anything. You're going to cause infections, inflammation. However, if you have uh, this and you do it, you're going to squeeze and it pops up. So I would advise you before you start playing with your skin, do go to an esthetician, a medical esthetician or a professional esthetician, somebody that knows her stuff or to a dermatologist to get it diagnosed, to see what it is. So the first procedure that um, a medical esthetician or a dermatologist will do is electrodesiccation. And basically it is a, like a little needle, a heat like a needle, and they will go above the area and they will just burn it. And uh, so then after the burn, it will cause a little scab. The doctor or the esthetician will give you some ointments. Once the scab comes off, it, uh, it, uh, it basically, it makes it a little bit smoother but it will not deal with a problem. Okay, where's my picture? So it will electrodesiccate here, it will take away the bump, but the problem is still there. Also, the problem with that is that may cause hyperpigmentation. 
especially with individuals that have a little bit of pigmentation like uh, colored skin. So decide that only dermatologists can do electrodesiccation or uh, electrologists can do that. So please, before you decide to do that process, really think and do your Remember research. to stay with me because right now I'm gonna be talking about what a dermatologist or medical esthetician or nurses can do, but I will talk about natural remedies that you can do to prevent or slow it down or even reduce these bumps. The next one is laser, and laser usually are done by medical estheticians or dermatologists, doctors, and the two types that I found uh, quite a bit of results is the CO2 laser, which is, okay, it doesn't go too deep. And the one that is a bit better is the Agnes laser. It goes a little bit deeper. I've seen uh, fairly good results, but reoccurrence will happen. So if these bumps will really bother you, maybe you wanna do laser, but then do some natural remedies for it not to come back. The next one that I know is called the cryotherapy. It's liquid nitrogen, you're freezing the area. However, again, it stays on the surface. So it will not deal with a problem at the bottom. It will reoccur. Discoloration might happen and all these procedures are a little bit painful. So that is also a factor that you will need to decide if they will re reoccur, they will come back, it is painful, what should I do? Well, microdermabrasion can be done by an esthetician. Um, basically what you're doing, you're sanding things down. It does look a little bit better, but again, you're not dealing with the issue, the bottom, okay? So you might want to combine microdermabrasion with some natural remedies. Uh, some uh, doctors, dermatologists give oral Accutane. I would stay away from that. I don't believe in Accutane, but again, it is uh, uh, my feeling about it. And there's so many uh, contraindications with Accutane. Please do your research. Another uh, question that I've uh, had from uh, uh, my uh, uh, people that have asking me, my students and uh, my subscribers, Maria, what about uh, retinoid, uh, retinoids, uh, retin-A, um, retinol and all that? It will cause more irritation. And again, um, I've, I haven't seen really good impressive results with the retinols, so I would not advise it. And major irritation because this area, it is so, so sensitive. Okay, so, so let's look at some peels. Uh, there are two peels that are very, very strong. Um, you can buy these uh, on Amazon, whatever, but I don't advise it because they're very, very caustic. So I would advise you to use, uh, to go to a dermatologist and to deal with a syringoma. Um, it's called a BCA. It's a long word and or the TCA. And, and basically they're going to put, uh, apply this, uh, acid which is very caustic right onto the head and then it will go down and depending how long they leave that that acid it will corrode all the way down and then some people will use vitamin a because it's a healing so i advise you if you decide to go that way be very very careful there have been people buying the uh, the tca acid and uh, I would not I would not do it. I would go to a dermatologist and you have to do a couple of treatments and then they will it will destroy uh, that specific uh, sweat gland. It's very caustic. please don't do it. Um, I'm not even gonna teach you because I know how to do it, but I'm not even gonna tell you how it's done uh, because I find that it's something something around your eyes. You don't wanna ruin your skin because if you put the, the BCA or the TCA, uh, not right in the center, but let's say a little bit on the side, you're gonna cause burns and maybe scarring and that's what you don't wanna do. But you know about it. Go to a dermatologist if you decide to do it this way. The name of it, I will have it written out. You'll see it. Do, do, do your research. Another uh, type of peel that you can use is glycolic acid. 
because the glycolic acid will go a little bit deeper, uh, the pyruvic acid, and you can use these acids, which are usually estheticians can use them. And so, and you can use them with natural remedies. So there's so many options out there that you can do. So for example, you can have, a, let's say, a, do microdermabrasion. And then uh, after in a couple of days, you can do uh, maybe the glycolic acid in that area and pay close attention what happens uh, to your skin that you don't over irritate. Thank you for being here still with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. So now I'm going to talk about six different natural procedures. You might want to try all of them, but give time each one of them. So don't try one and then the other one and the other, because you have to give time. With natural procedures and natural products or remedies, it takes time, but they do work. So let's look at procedure number one, apple cider vinegar. Oh my goodness. So what you should do first, wash your skin well, do a nice scrub in the scrub all over your face, but especially in the area that you have the problem. Then you get a Q-tip and you soak the Q-tip with apple cider vinegar. Please use organic with a mother uh, apple cider vinegar and you start massaging that area with the Q-tip back and forth and leave it there. What happens is that uh, the acid nature of uh, the um, of the apple cider vinegar it dissolves gradually dissolves the bump and it gets absorbed all the way down to the okay so it goes here and it dissolves and it goes all the way down to here so the syringoma gets healed slowly. It is an antioxidant, so it repairs the area. So a little scrub, apple cider vinegar. And you should do it a little bit every night. Now, if you start seeing it's irritating, maybe back off a little bit, uh, maybe every second night or every third night, you are your own doctor, so pay close attention to your skin. Lemon juice is another natural alternative that uh, you can use. Remember, all these alternatives may work for you and may, may not. So do try them. But the first thing you need to do is always do a little bit of a scrub so you remove the dead skin off the surface so the product or whatever you're using goes deeper into the skin. Vitamin, uh, the uh, lemon juice is high in vitamin C, so it also repairs the skin. But if you notice that the lemon juice is irritating you, uh, be very careful. Maybe you don't want to do it every night, maybe every second night. Um, or maybe apple cider vinegar is better for you. Uh, the aloe vera gel is also very good. Uh, it's very soothing and is high in vitamin E. So maybe you want to alternate between the two and also very good for, uh, for the wrinkles. Castor oil. You get a few drops of castor oil uh, and uh, baking soda. You create a little paste and you apply in uh, that area. Uh, leave it on for about 10 minutes and uh, you can do this every day or even twice a day. Um, castor oil is not only good for colitis or flatulence, it's also good for syringoma. Uh, so, but you might want to do this at least a couple of times a day until it does reduce. Now, the next one, number five, I don't really like it. I like to eat it, but I don't like to put it on my face, but it is onion, onion juice. And so you just cut the onion, squeeze the onion, and you apply into uh, the area of the syringoma. Leave it on for about 10 minutes, and then you rinse it. And you can do this two times a day, uh, maybe in the morning, in the evening, and uh, keep on doing it until the blemish goes away. The next one, I like to eat it. I don't like to put it on my face. It is crushed uh, garlic. And uh, so you get the garlic and you cut it up and you crush it up. And uh, by crushing, you know those little crusher, okay? What you're doing, you're squeezing a little bit of the, uh, the juice and you want to apply it, uh, the crushed garlic right into the uh, area and uh, put in a de adhesive tape and go to sleep with it. 
and you leave it all night long and then in the morning you remove it, rinse it, apply your uh, moisturizer and away you go. When you're dealing with even these natural remedies, you do need to use, please use a some form of a sunscreen. Uh, because uh, the acid and the vitamin C and all that stuff, it makes the skin photosensitive. And uh, photosensitive means the, stim the melanocytes in the skin are sensitive to the sun and you might get uh, uh, hyperpigmentation. For me, I always say mineral makeup and I have a link below. Mineral makeup is really good because uh, um, it uh, not only it gives an evenness to the skin because it has a little bit of color, but it also it is uh, a natural SPF. So you're protecting your skin at the same time. So it gives evenness and also protects the skin. So again, on uh, this long tutorial, I do not know how to make my tutorials shorter. Uh, I've given you what a dermatologist will do, uh, what an esthetician, a medical esthetician, and what you can do at home. And you can work them all together. You can uh, go get a laser and then maintain it at home with a natural remedy. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If it brought you value, give me thumbs up, share, subscribe, and I will talk with you very, very soon. Take care.